Okay, let's continue with the disk image creation here for the GPT disks for UEFI. I'm gonna work on filling out the EFI system partition since last time we filled out the partition entry arrays and tables for the primary and secondary GPT header on the disk, but we haven't filled in those partitions yet. And the only one I really need to mess with is the EFI system partition so we can have a folder or directory structure for EFI and boot subfolders under root. And we can put in a file under that boot folder, such as bootx64.efi. And if it's found there, then on boot up your firmware, if it supports UEFI and you have a 64-bit x86 machine, it'll find that file and automatically boot it. So that's the purpose for this. But to fill that out, we need an EFI system partition with that structure. And that follows the FAT file system. So we'll be going over that. Cool stuff. So if I go in my Linux box here, let's see, this is the UEFI spec. So chapter 13, protocols media access, I'm looking for 13.3 file system format, because it kind of explains that they just use the FAT file system. It doesn't have the layouts or the structs or anything. I'll be using other docs for that, but this just says from UEFI itself what they're going to be supporting. So it encompasses the use of FAT32 and 12 or 16. I will be using a USB, but FAT32 works the same for USB, so that's fine. So they talk about needing FAT, but they don't explain really the layout or anything. Uh, if you want to use an ISO disk, they do support El Torito as well, so that's good. But it just says the system partition is there. We have the master boot record, we wrote that stuff, and we need the system partition. So the file system format, the first block contains a BIOS parameter block, which all this is in the Microsoft FAT docs that I'll be looking at. Yeah, what variant to use is the size. The only thing I'm going to worry about is here, the UEFI system partition, the FAT32 data region should be aligned to the physical block boundary and optimal, optimal transfer length granularity. So in GPT it talked about that, but if you don't want to worry about it, you can just align things on one megabyte boundaries to support all the common sizes from 512 bytes to 4K. And that's what I'm going to be doing here, but we need to align, or it suggests we should align, the data region of our file allocation table file system. So I will be doing that. And we can either mess with the reserve sector count or the fat size field, or both. I'm going to mess with the fat size field since reserve sector count, we can just leave at 32, which we'll see in a bit. We can just leave that at 32 for the fat 32. And I can mess with the fat size field to say how big our file allocation tables are going to be. So I'm just gonna align these things on a certain number of LBAs or sectors so that the data region ends up at a one megabyte value where it starts at. That's what I'll be doing. That doesn't make too much sense. Sorry about that, but it'll just be more alignment. This goes through a little bit more how you can name things. I'll be doing the 8.3 naming or a directory structure of EFI and boot. Although you can have your own folders and things in there if you want, but I'll be doing EFI boot and the boot machine name.EFI. That's all I'm going to be doing. It also says, you know, it kind of looks through things for block IO protocols if you want to use that in the future for EFI applications. And it says it does support El Torito, so I may do an ISO later on, but not in this series because it's a little more involved writing that. But okay. So anyway, it doesn't really explain how the FAT file system is laid out. <laughs> it just says protocols and then it goes on from there. So how do we find that out? Well, I'll be using the, the Microsoft paper itself, the hardware white paper, extensible firmware initiative, instead of firmware, uh, you know, they, they use initiative instead of the other word. <laughs> that 32 file system spec, but this is for EFI. So it's what we're gonna be using. And it just describes FAT12, 16, and 32. And we can get this from the internet. I also like the Wikipedia page design of the file allocation table file system. Describes the regions and things in a little more sort of a compressed manner here, a little easier to read for some parts of it. But basically we'll have a few different sections. FAT32 has one less. We don't need to deal with the root directory region, but we'll have reserve sectors, which will have a boot sector or a volume boot record in this case. We'll have a file system information sector, and we'll have these both also at a backup location at sector six. So this is all within the file system, within the EFI system partition, not on the disk where we had sector one or LBA zero being the MBR, the master boot record, and LBA one being the primary GPT header followed by the tables. We're 
This is more as an offset, a sector offset from the system partition, which is at a one meg boundary is what I set it at. So for 512 byte sectors, it's sector 2048 is where the ESP would start. And within that partition, the first sector is going to be a volume boot record for its boot sector. And then we'll be followed by the file system info sector. And then at sector six on that partition, we'll also have copies of these. After those, we'll have the fat region for the file allocation tables themselves, what gives the name to this file system. We'll fill those with cluster values, which for FAT32 is going to be 32 bits. And that's what the number stands for, how many bits per cluster. So we'll have clusters defining where at in the data region of this file system in this partition, the file data is located for directories and files contained therein. So after the file allocation tables, we're not going to deal with the root directory region. We don't need it for FAT32. We'll just have the data region immediate, immediately following um, two FATs. I'll make two for data redundancy, and most things need two to be supported. So we'll be going with two file allocation tables. Right after that, we'll have the data for the files themselves. The data for a directory will just be directory entries. The data for files will be whatever the files are, <laughs> you know, text for text or binary for binary, that kind of stuff. We'll be going through that. This just explains that a little bit better. So where do you find info on the paper and everything? If I go to the bottom of the wiki page, this I think leads to, oh, actually, okay, that directly downloads. So that's where I got the fatgen103.doc. And that is what I'm using. That's what I'm using within Linux here, within LibreOffice. I just saved it as an ODT file and changed the colors a little bit to not be blind and white. So that's what this is. Instead of the normal EFI nomenclature, they say initiative. I guess this was early on, 2000. It was before it changed hands from Intel and 05, but that's all right. Okay, so we'll go through and write things up from here. Skip the legalese. It's version 1.03, so that's why it's fat gen 103. So we'll skip the legalese. Yeah, the they use little Indian for everything, which is nice. They just explain how that's going to be byte ordered in memory. But we'll, we will be using a BIOS parameter block for the boot sector for a volume boot record here. The master boot record that we wrote originally is for sort of the entire disk itself, and it describes partitions contained on the disk or in our disk image. Uh, but the boot sector for a particular partition or for a volume can also be known as the volume boot record and not the master boot record. So that's why they're kind of called a little bit different. The volume boot record is for a partition. The master boot record is for the overall disk or unpartitioned, non-partitioned media, if you will. But BPB is for the BIOS parameter block. Otherwise, boot sector starts with BS. It's a load of BS. So I'll just go through this and we'll make structs. I won't go back and forth because that's kind of annoying if I try to do that. So the boot sector, the volume boot record we'll be writing, it starts with three bytes containing kind of no ops if you want, but it'll say, hey, we're gonna jump to actual boot code later in the boot sector to run some actual stuff. Um, I'll just be doing probably EB and something and 9.0 or E9 something something. All right, so for this, I'm probably just gonna put zero here because it doesn't care what it is. We'll just do EB0090 when the time comes. So any 8-bit value is allowed. We don't really have to do anything there. OEM name, we can put a name in. We're not going to be doing 4.1 because I don't care. We'll put in some random value. Bytes per sector, this will be the LBA size. So anytime you see sector in this document, it will mean the bytes per sector size, and that's how I'll be doing things. So our LBA size will follow as 512, 1024, 2048, 4096, and this will be used to get the cluster size and other needed values in the file system. 4096 is the max. Sectors per cluster, I'll probably just use one. I mean, we could make it a user changeable setting for, through a command line flag or something. I'll probably just use one to be simple. So 512 bytes is gonna be one cluster, or 4096, if you set that as the LBA size, will still be one cluster. Even though that's, usually they change things to be more optimal for a disk, but that's all right. Reserve sectors, which will be what, it doesn't say. For FAT32 is gonna be 32. Although for UEFI from that spec, this could be changed to align the data region, but I'll just leave it at 32 and I'll align the fat size instead. The number of fats will typically be two. I'll just have it be two. That's just for redundancy purposes. 
root entry counts will be zero for FAT32 because we're not going to use a root directory region. Total sectors 16 bit for FAT32 should be zero. Uh, the media, I'm going to use F8 for fixed non removable media, although we could use a removable, removable value for F0 because we're technically going to write to you know, a flash drive or something. F0 would work for that, and it's a great series that Nintendo should make more games for, but you know, we're going to use F8 for fixed media because it doesn't matter too much. Fat size 16 on Fat32 should be 0. Yeah, we're doing Fat32. We don't need any of the Fat12 or 16 values. Sectors per track, only relevant for geometry. We well, can probably just leave that at zero. Number of heads probably as well. Hidden sectors, we can make the number of LBAs before this EFI system partition. So technically it's the count of sectors preceding the partition that contains this volume, which will be the number of sectors before this partition in the disk image. So we can make it uh, I think I just made it the alignment value. So 512 byte OBAs, it'll be 2048 to equal one meg. So we can have it be 2047, right? Whatever the size is minus one up to that point, we can just put within this field. And then total sector 32, this is how big the partition is in our case. So how big this file system is gonna take up on the disk. So this will be our ESP size and OBAs, I think, yeah. The count of all sectors in all four regions. That'll be all right. All right, at this point, 12 and 16 diverge from 32, so we don't need to care too much about it. But some of these will be the same between them, so like the volume label, it'll say refer to the one above. <laughs> so for some of these, we'll probably have to look back up here, but okay, fat size 32. The count of sectors occupied by one fat. So this I'm going to have be a different value. Um, to be aligned with whatever our alignment value is. According to the UEFI spec, we can align the fat size thing or the reserve sectors count. So I'll be aligning on the size of the file allocation tables. So we're going to align the data region on a one meg boundary. However many sectors that's going to be <laughs> is going to be divided by two for the fats and offset by the reserve sectors as well. So it'll be like 2048 divided by two, but it'll also be 2048 minus the reserve sectors, which is 32. So I guess 2016 over two for 500 tollbyte sectors, 1008 approximately for the size of these. We'll see, I'll calculate it later. But that will align the data region on a one meg boundary. The extended flags, I'll just keep zero because I've tried this with the bit set for only one fat, not mirroring, and it did not work because uh, EDK2 specifically, so the OVMF firmware, real devices, the firmware may be different, but for OVMF, they specifically want this to be mirrored and they will report uh, nothing found. If you look in the source code, uh, they don't support mirrored fats. So I'm not gonna be doing that <laughs> for the EFI system partition at least. So we'll just have this be zero and we'll mirror the FAT1 into FAT2 for whatever cluster operations we'll be doing. Okay, file system version defines the version to be zero, so we'll just leave it as zero, okay. Root clusters, the cluster number of the first sector of the root directory, cluster two, not required to be two, I'll make it be two. The first two clusters in the file allocation table are reserved, which this document says later. So the first actual cluster you can use for file data is going to be for the root directory, should be for the root directory, and we'll have it be two, because it'll be right after the first two that are we can't mess with, they're reserved. File system info is the location of the file system info sector, usually one. So the first sector is going to be the volume boot record, right after is going to be the file system info, according to the reserve sector region for this file system. So this is just pointing to that file system info sector which will be one. Zero would be the VBR itself. Boot sector, usually six. This is the location of the backup boot sector data. It'll be six. I'll just make it six. And we will copy this volume boot region sector and the file system info sector starting at sector six as well. So sector six and seven of the EFI system partition will be equal to sector zero and one. They're just copied for redundancy purposes. Uh, reserved should always set to zero. Okay, we'll make it zero. A drive number. 
doesn't matter. Uh, I'll probably just set this to hex 80, so drive number one for legacy BIOS boot, or you can set it to one, I guess, for floppy A. I don't know. I'll just set it to hex 80, that's fine, 128. These fields are the same. Reserved, I think, is zero. We have the boot signature, which is going to be 55AA, I believe. But it says these are the same as above. I'll go back up. Okay, no, boot signature is going to be different. It's going to be 29 and hex, which is 41, 32 plus 9. Reserved one is going to be zero. Here we go, yeah. This drive number, well, I'll use hex 80, that's fine. X80 for hard disk. Reserved one will be zero. Boot signature will be hex 29. Volume ID will make be something. We could put no, no name here for the volume label. Usually the current date and time, we could make it zero, I think, and it'll be all right. The volume label, I'll probably put no name just to leave out the directory entry for a volume label later. It's one less thing we have to write to the file system. The file system type, We'll make FAT32 followed by three spaces, so it'll be eight, six, seven, eight, yeah, eight bytes. And that'll be all we do for the boot sector, <laughs> or the volume boot record in this case. But it also says, note, 510, 511 have to equal the boot sector signature, so that's not, you know, in the table, but we do have to do that. So make sure it's still 55AA or AA55 in Little Indian. It's not the last two bytes, it's specifically 5, 10, and 11, because this counts as a boot sector, yeah. You can have FATs that are larger than the amount you specify, that's fine, then it goes over the file allocation tables. So let's lay out the volume boot record structure. I'm gonna lay out that in code, so we can have that there, which is here. So I can actually get to writing something a little bit, but like the previous videos, it's just going to be writing structures out. I did set a couple to-dos for myself that I forgot, so I'm glad I left those there. Oh, hard-coded 32s for the GPT tables? Yeah, uh, we could have a, a thing for that. That might be good. So we have all these and OBAs. We can probably add stuff here as well. Let's do GPT table LBAs. Sizes and LBAs, that's fine. So wherever I have my, my to-do items, let's just do it at the bottom in main where I'm getting everything else here. GPT table LBAs, and that's going to be the size of the table in LBAs. Let's do bytes to LBAs. And it'll be, well, it'll be our LBA size as well, actually, so we don't need that. It'll be evenly divisible. I think I have that as a an enum value, right? Yeah, GPT table size. So we can do that there. GPT table size over our LBA size, and that will be the size of the table in LBAs. Simple enough. But I do need that after our LBA size, which I guess has gotten first. Yeah. That's just hard-coded to 512 right now, right? Yeah, this will change later from a command line flag, but right now we can assume it's 512. So I'm going to get this first, because we need the value here. So this will be GPT table LBAs. We'll have two tables, so multiplied by two. Some reason, yeah. So alignment times two, that's two meg alignment for our two partitions. LBA size times the number of LBAs times two for the two tables. Um, and then I added three, because it was 67. Oh, one for the MBR and one for each of the GPT headers. That's what that was, okay. Actually, I don't like the parentheses here. I'm doing too much parentheses here, sorry about that. <laughs> I wanted the number of LBAs times the OBA size. So this is the OBAs for the tables, and then I'm gonna add three for the LBAs for the MBR and the two GPT headers multiplied by the LBA size. And then we add the alignment value to that because that'll all be in bytes. And that should be padding there, okay. That's all I was trying to do. And that gives test.image of 36 megs, which is what it was before. I just wanna make sure things still work with that new padding value of two megs. Yep, yeah, it's, it's equivalent to what we had before. Just make sure the calculations are there. 
All right, GPT OBAs, we've had in. Okay, these can all really be constant, to be honest with you. But I didn't make them that way to begin with, so that's all right. All right, where do I have to do here? So this will be GPT table OBAs, same with that 32. And same with this 32, except not GPT table OBAs. That's how big the partition table LBA would be. That's true. Okay. Don't have any more to do's. That's good. All right. Just make sure that still works. Still 36 meg. Yeah, we're okay. All right. Got to remember what I'm doing. All right. So let's actually write some things. Let's say we have another function here. We will write... EFI system partition. Um, with fat32 file system. So I'll say if not write ESP. I guess we'll pass the image pointer still. That's what I was doing. And we'll say could not write ESP for file. So we'll have that be up here. Let's just copy this down there. Right, EFI system partition ESP. Fat32 file system, so we'll write ESP given the image, given that I can't type. Assume everything's all right. Return true. Okay, so we need some stuff. I'm gonna add some type defs here. We'll just say we'll fill this out. And I didn't mean to jump down there. Yeah, we'll just say we'll fill this out in a bit. Let's add some more type defs down here just to have them all at the top. So this will be fat32 VBR. So it'll be volume boot record. Volume boot record VBR. It'll have a BIOS parameter block within it. All that good stuff. Probably needs to be packed. We'll make sure we can call it VBR. That's be fine. That'll probably be fine. I called MBR MBR, so yeah, that's that's fine. So I'm just gonna lay out the the struct fields like how it lays out in the Fat Gen 103 doc. You know, this whole table, all these values. So I'm gonna do that, and I'll be back when that's done. All right, so I got the struct laid out here. Got it all fit in on the screen, so I think I was successful. <laughs> Just the boot code here. Normally this would jump later to boot code in the boot sector, which is here, which they don't have in the table, but this seems to take up 90 bytes. So up to 510, we're just gonna fill out nothing. I'll make it zero, and then we have that boot signature, AA, AA55 at 511, and well, at bytes 510 and 511 to fill out this boot sector for the partition, but these are just everything there. Name, bytes per sector, sector per cluster, reserve sector count, number of fats, this should be two. Root entry count will be zero. Total sectors, the media, so we'll be using fixed disk F8. The size, this will be zero for FAT32. Sectors per track, number of heads, hidden sectors, total sectors, blah, blah, blah. So we're just laying it out here, and I'll lay that out in the, in the function that we're gonna do stuff in, writing the ESP. We'll do this, we'll have a VBR, VBR. We'll equal some stuff here and, well, we can at least write that to disk. We don't have the file system info sector yet, but that's all right. Let's say fill out volume boot record VBR. Fill out file system info sector. We don't have anything for that. That's later on in the documents, but that's all right. Uh, we could write it to the disk first, but we'll probably fill that out, and then we'll write them there. So I'll just say write <laughs> VBR and FS info, and then we'll go to, we'll write it at the backup location. So I'll just fill out the logic here first. Go to backup and boot sector location, and we'll write this again. Uh, we'll write the fats, so I'll just, I'll put that here, I guess, write FATs. And we'll write the file data. We'll write it back there at the data region. 
So this will be, I guess the reserve sector region will be writing these here. I don't know if I need to lay out things like that or if it makes sense. Um, I, I could do that, I guess. Reserve sectors region. And I'll have the fats. The fat region. And then the data region. I don't really need to do that, but that might that might help you if you're going along with the, the file system stuff. So okay, VBR, we have all that stuff. That's gonna be at the top. All of this stuff here. And I'll just copy that there. So I don't have to remember it, because I'm not going to remember it. So also get rid of that, because we don't need these. Uh, okay, there's easier ways to do this in Vim. I don't remember them, but yeah. <laughs> the jump code we can do EB, whatever, and 90, so I'll be doing that. And we won't be equal to anything. Our OEM, it'll be uh, this OS. That's fine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that'll be all right. You can name it whatever you want. I'll just say this disk. Uh, bytes per sector will be our LBA size. Will be our LBA size. Uh, sectors per cluster. I'm just going to have B1 for simplicity. You could change this if you want. Note that this is limited to only 512, 1024, 2048, 4096. Only values that are supported for that. Reserved sector count is going to be 32 for FAT32. Number of FATs, I'm going to use two of them. Root entry count is zero because we don't worry about the root directory region in FAT32. Total sectors per, six, per 16, FAT1216 is going to be zero. Media, I'm going to have F8. I'm going to have BF8, could also be F0, but this will stand for fixed um, media. I'll say fixed non-removable media. Could also be F0 for EG flash drive. We'll have it be that for a hard drive. Fat size 16, we're not going to do. We have fat size 32. Sectors per track, I'm not going to worry about, or heads. Uh, yeah, because these are both for int13h that we're not going to worry about. Hidden sectors will be sectors before this partition on the disk, so we'll have that be our ESP LBA, right? Whatever that was, which is our alignment. And we'll subtract one from that, so this will be number of sectors before this partition. Volume, say volume. Total sectors 32 will be the size, so ESP size OBAs, I think. Yeah, called it that. So the size of this partition. That size 32 is, will be the size of one file allocation table. We do have two of them, so I'm going to divide it by two. But I also want to align on the one megabyte alignment uh, boundary for the data region. So what do we have before the fat region in the file system? We have the reserve sectors, and then we have the fats. So the reserve sectors are going to be 32 in total, because we have that here. So I can lay out, these all need dots in front of them. It's not guaranteed to be in this order, so I can't really rely on this being set before this point if I do a, uh, whatever they call this, designated initializer. Forgot I needed the dots, sorry about that. But yeah, or I think it's designated initializer here, not compound literal, so... We can't rely on that, so I will be hard coding 32 again. I could fill that out like up here. It's probably fine. Um, and it can be eight bits. We'll say reserve sectors will be 32 for fat 32. We'll just say that's reserve sectors or reserve sector count. No, that's fine. I think that makes sense. So we have that many sectors, but the size is going to be ESP size and OBAs, right? That's the whole size of our uh, our partition, but we do need the alignment actually. So I'll just do ESP LBA, or we can get the alignment, the align LBA. Do we have that at the bottom? <laughs> I 
Alignment divided by OVA size. Yeah, so that should be 2048. So let's do a line OVA for the amount of disk sectors that we need to align on a one megabyte boundary in this case. And the reserve sectors will take away from that, subtract, and then the number of fats is going to be multiplied by two. So let's divide that by two. So this will give the size of the fat. So in this sector, we'll have 32 sectors, and we need to add a number of sectors after the reserved amount of 32 in order to align on a one megabyte boundary. So normally we could just add 2048, but since we are we have an amount before that that we need to align by, I'm gonna chop that off. And since we have two file allocation tables, I'm dividing by two. So in effect, if we have 512 byte sectors, We'll have 2048 minus 32, which would be 2016, divided by 2, it'll be 1008. So we'll have 2016 sectors for the fats, plus the reserve sector amount to equal 2048, so that the data region starts on 2048. So it'll be all right. So I'll do this to align data region on, no, alignment value. <laughs> now extended flags will do zero. And this will say mirrored fats. So we'll have to mirror the values in the first FAT to the second plus FATs. We only have two, so that's all right. File system version is going to be zero. Our root cluster is going to be two. So clusters zero and one are reserved. Uh, root directory cluster starts at two. File system info sector is going to be one. So sector zero equals this VBR. FS info sector follows it. All right. The backup boot sector is going to be six. Reserved is going to be just reserve values will have be zero. Drive number will have be 80. So be first hard drive. Reserved one, that byte's going to be zero. Boot signature here, it just says it has to be 29, so we're going to make it 29. Uh, volume ID, I think we can just be zero. Volume label will be no name. No name. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. No volume label. Well, it, in effect, this will mean you look in, inside of the root directory file data for a directory entry for a volume label according to a flag set in the directory entry. I'm not going to have that, so I'm just going to say we're not going to have a volume label. Uh, but normally it would also be taken from there, but I'm not going to write it. So we won't have a volume label at all for this, but that's okay. It'll just be, it'll be fine. <laughs> uh, the file system type will make FAT32, FAT32, space, space, space. And... I also realize the semicolons need to be commas, but that's okay. Just realize that. The boot code, 420 bytes. Because funny number, that'll be zero. We're not going to do any boot code. And the boot sector signature will be AA55. Okay. So yeah, it's going to say that's wrong because of these to match this. Yeah, so let's do... This, uh, replace semicolon with comma. Should be all right. And it's not. What, what do you not like? Scalar initializer braces around, yes. Oh. Yeah, need to get rid of those. We don't need, we don't need the size markers anymore. Of course, and it doesn't like it. Still, excess elements, instruct initializer, 303. What is it talking about here? Oh, I got a bunch of issues, don't I? Oh, that's not good. Probably some very obvious place that I'm just missing one comma or semicolon or something somewhere, and it messed everything up. Expected identifier before GUID at 18. Interesting. Oh, I got rid of, oh, <laughs> I pressed the, <laughs> an enter there a while back, huh? Okay. 
There we go. Unused variable. You see, you have one issue at the top of the file. You get 2,000 errors. I wish uh, compilers were better about that, but yeah. You can have it escape and not go on on the first error, but I figure that's not good, and I don't want to advocate that, but that's all right. Okay, volume boot record we got. We need the file system info sector. We need to write it as well. Are we at this location in the image? Probably, because I wrote the GPTs at the end. Well, no, we're not, because we wrote to the end of the disk. No, so I'll have to seek to that point. Okay, that's fine. So we'll F seek to the image. It will be ESP OBA, which should be the alignment OBA, but that's fine. We'll have seek sets, and this needs to be in bytes. So multiply by OBA size, and then we'll write it. And we'll say if we couldn't write VBR, size of VBR, one, two. I'll reverse that, right? Number of members, and then the size. Always forget that. Write that to the image. If it doesn't equal size of VBR, then we'll return false. We should have other issues here, other errors actually, so let's, I'll write that. Could not write VBR. And it'll give two errors if it fails, but that's fine. All right, we do need the file system info sector, however, but we can fill out some of this other stuff here, right? I'll, I'll keep the to-do for that. Go to the backup sector, we can do that. That'll be at sector six. So it will be whatever it was, dot BK. BK have it your way sector. BK boot sector, there we go. I don't know why I can see that. <laughs> yeah, except I want it to be here. And it doesn't do that, all right. We need the boot sector, we need to seek to that. We can go forward from our location or I can just go from where we're at. So we'll just add the backup boot sector value as an offset from the start of this partition at the ESP LBA. And I'll just multiply that by the LBA size. And we'll write this stuff again. And now that I'm thinking about it, this will be one OBA in size, so I'll have to fill out uh, to the OBA size. I don't remember what I called that. Write full OBA size. Simple enough. And do I pass? I pass the image to that. So we will have to do that for each OBA or for each disk sector that we're writing, including the VBR. I'll just say at backup sector or at backup location. Okay, so let's fill out the file system info sector just to get this rocking and rolling a little bit. That is also in the in the fat doc here. But it's further along past the data structure and all for some reason. It's past the fats. Here we go. Fat32 file system info sector and backup boot sector. So we need to lay out this stuff. We have specific signatures, which is going to be AARR, Little Indian, RRAA, I guess, in a, as a string. And I just know that because A, a is 41 in hex, and lowercase a is 20 above that. And I think these are R because I looked at this before. <laughs> Reserved one is zero. We have another signature of kind of reverse this. So capital, uh, lowercase a, capital A, lowercase r's. So kind of sort of byte reversed and, and casing. Uh, the free count will be the last free cluster on the volume. We could, I think, have it be all Fs here. So it must be computed. That should be all right. Or we can compute it ourselves, either one. But we might be able to just leave it as all Fs, hopefully. Next free will be the next free cluster number. We could also have this be all Fs. The driver should start looking at cluster two. 
to the last number that the driver allocated. So we could also fill it in later and update it on the disk, or we can just set them to all Fs maybe and have it work out. We'll find out. If it doesn't boot later on, we'll know that something's wrong. We can look for that. Reserve 2 is 0, and the trailing signature is also AA55, but 16-bit. So that's OK. Back up boot sector, then it goes through the directories. So I'll fill out this. If I can get them all on screen, yeah, I'll fill out this, uh, this structure here. We'll do that. All right, so I just laid out the struct here, type deft it at the top, file system info sector, put it right under the VBR. Get the lead signature, 480, so that's 484, 488, 492, 496, plus 12 is 508. Yeah, to fill out the last four bytes to 512 for the sector size, so that makes sense. So we'll put that down here. Fill out the file system info sectors, so we'll have FS info, FS info, that's fine. Yeah, C isn't case sensitive with naming, so that's all right. So lead signature is what, 41615252, or is it 7272? 41615252, okay. Reserved is going to be just nothing, that's fine. Struct sig is going to be 61417272, which it has here. Yeah. Right now, I'm going to hope we can get away with just having all Fs for the free and next free, but we'll see. The count of free available clusters and the next free cluster on the partition. Reserve 2 is also going to be 0. And the trailing signature, I said it was 16 bit, it's 32 bit. <laughs> but it is still 55AA in the top 510, 511th bytes. So AA55000. That's why they do that. That's one sector as well. We'll have to write here. Let's just write that. So if not, write FS info, size of FS info, not equal size of FS info. Could not write, we'll say file system info sector, let's say at 32. I guess we could say ESP, EFI system partition. So we know what area and the image we're trying to write, I guess. Yeah, that should be all right. We'll have to fill that out as well. That's going to be one LBA, one disk sector in size, potentially. We'll go to the backup location. We'll just do it again. Rack, smack, do it again. Those aren't the lyrics to the song. It's too early for me to try to be attempting anything that approaches singing, so okay, we'll do that. That region, we need to write the file allocation tables. Uh, these will not, these won't have a data structure. They could though. Like you could potentially just make an array of clusters, which is gonna be 32 bits in my case. So we say we have a cluster value, we could make like, well, if we type deft it. Type def. I think that's how you do that. We can have a, you know, a whole bunch of clusters, like a thousand, and that could be our table. That could be a table for an FAT or something. You know, I don't know. <laughs> well, that it, it would actually be cluster fat. It'd be like that, right? But you could do it like that. That might be better, a better abstraction we could go with. I'm just going to write the clusters one by one as you want 32 values, because I'm a lazy person, but... <laughs> It's not really the best. We do have to go to that region on the disk, though. So how do we do that? I know it's going to be after the reserve sector region, and it's going to be after, well, it's going to be at the FAT region. So it'll be right after the reserve sectors for FAT32 file system. So I'm going to seek to that point. It's going to be something seek set. It's going to be within the image. 
And we'll have it be some point here. So what is it going to be? It'll be the ESP LBA. And we're gonna add probably the reserve sector count, which is gonna be up here. So in the VBR dot reserve sector count. We could also just add reserve sectors, but I figure we'll do that. Um, I don't have that. What is it called? BPB. Because I did not copy it correctly. <laughs> reserve sector count, there we go. So that'll be 32, but right after the reserve sectors, we have the file allocation tables themselves. Convert that to bytes. And we'll write the data region for the file data. We will have to mirror the fats. I'll say note, fats will be mirrored. So how do we actually write the clusters? What does it look like? What does it even mean? I like this Wikipedia page for explaining it a little better than the UEFI doc, but if we go to the fat region here for the file allocation tables, we see some tables color-coded for clusters, cluster chains. Um, it can be a little weird to read, but note that the, the number in FAT, so FAT 12, 16, or 32, is the number of bits for a cluster in the file allocation table. So if you look at this for FAT, for fat 12, the number of bits is going to be 12 per cluster. So uh, 12 bits in hex is going to be three hex digits, three nibbles. So F0F, for example, would be cluster zero, and FFF, the next, would be cluster one, and then two, three, four, so on. And these are zero based in these tables. So the first cluster would be F0F, and you're given an Indianness marker here. So F0 is the media value in the BIOS parameter block. So we did F8, F0 would be for a removable flash drive or something. So this would be F8 in my case, if I was doing F12, it'd be F8F. And the next one's three full Fs, it's gonna be an end of chain indicator, typically all bits are set, so all Fs. And then you have the actual file data starting with the root, well, maybe not the root directory in this case, but assuming it would be the root directory, it's just a number here. Um, it's chain for a non-fragmented -frag file, so a cluster for file data a cluster chain, like a linked list. You keep reading until you reach the end of chain marker, and that indicates the end of the cluster chain, so you don't have to look any farther in the file allocation table for a particular file. You're getting its data for the clusters allocated for that file. And to find where that cluster chain starts for a particular file, that is in a directory entry, which we'll see later. But just reading this here, we have some file that starts in cluster two, zero based, but the number in the cluster points to the next cluster that has file data for this file. So you keep reading zero based numbering until you get to the end of cluster marker and you're done reading data for that file off the disk in the data region. So zero based indexing, the first two are reserved, the media value and the end of chain marker. For this file, data starts in cluster two and it says, okay, we still have another one to go. We have to read cluster three as well. And that says, okay, we have to read cluster four. Since it's 12-bit, it looks a little odd, but three nibbles per cluster. Then this is the next one, this is cluster four, zero-based cluster indexing. It says, okay, we need to read five, five says we need to read six, six says we need to read seven, need to read eight. And in sector eight, well, yeah, cluster eight, we have an end of chain marker, so we need to stop reading for that. Uh, the one after that, we also have, you know, kind of, since it's 12 bits, they're kind of smashed together, but this starts the next cluster for the next file. This ends the current one with three Fs. Uh, I guess the low bits here and those. Anyway, it's a little easier with FAT16. It makes more sense. The non-removable marker and then the end of chain is gonna be just Fs here. So typically the lowest eight bits are gonna be the media marker in the first, the zero based first cluster. And then cluster one is going to be the end of chain marker. And then we'll have our file data again. Starts in cluster three, zero base, says look into four, look into five, look into six, look at seven, look at eight, look at nine. Sorry, look at eight. Look at seven, look at eight, and we have the end of chain we stop reading. The next one says, hey, look at, this will be sector nine. It'll say look at 10. 10 will say look at um, 16 plus four is 20, which is up here. Let's look at 21, 22. And look at 19, that goes over here, look at the next one, then end of chain. So it can have fragmentation as clusters are filled out. They're not all contiguous next to each other. That's why you needed to have defrag tools and things that, you know, fill in the colored blocks on the screen. That was fun to look at. Those programs and old Windows versions, for example. 
This is another file here, starts in 12. Well, it says look in 12, this is sector 11. Look in 12, look in 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and we end the cluster chain there, right? Um, these Fs are for something else, I guess. It just says, no, this is just one, uh, this is a file or a directory or something that would only have one cluster allocated to it. So the only cluster for the file is also the end of cluster marker. It means you don't need to look beyond this one cluster. It's ending here. And these zeros are just empty data. So you can stop reading a directory, for example, if you hit zeros or the file, there's no file data here otherwise. Uh, F7 is a special marker in the lowest eight bits of a cluster for a bad sector, a bad area on the disk or there was an error reading it or something. So that's just like, don't try reading this, it's bad. <laughs> that's what that means. FAT32, what we will be writing is similar to 16, but two more bytes everywhere, right? So we'll have a marker there, we'll have Fs. I guess they have zero F twice for some reason. I don't remember, but anyway, we'll write our normal stuff. Then we'll have, oh yeah, FAT32 is special in that the top four bits are reserved for the file system for other things. So the top four bits in the end of chain marker as well are going to be zero. Or is it the lowest four bits? I think it's the top four bits. Top four bits are going to be zero. That's why I see another zero F there. Normally you'd have, yeah, the media marker F zero and then all Fs, but we have the top four bits. So only 28 bits are used in a FAT32 cluster for whatever reason. Those are cleared. And we have the end of chain marker. Again, the top four bits are going to be cleared. Then another end of chain marker just saying this root directory here only takes up one cluster of data. So we don't have to read beyond this cluster for the root directory. But then we have normal file data here again. Starts in cluster number three, zero based. Says there's more data in cluster four, there's more data in five, six, seven, more data in eight, more data. So we're ending our reading of the file data in clusters because we have the end of cluster chain again. This one's fragmented. It says look in 20, which goes on here, right? And these are bad clusters. Don't try to read them. This is empty data. This may be a directory or other file that only takes up one cluster of data. So, um, I know that took me a while to try to <laughs> try to walk through, but hopefully that makes more sense as to reading these tables and cluster values. That's what we'll be writing essentially for directories and files. And yeah, we'll be doing that. You can look at uh, directories somewhere. Yeah, directory entry. I'll be doing short name, not long name directories. So we'll be doing 8.3 file names. But this just goes on a little bit longer than the fat doc has it. So that's why I'm looking at the documentation mostly. But we'll be writing directory entries. So, okay. The file allocation table. We'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and write some clusters be cluster F. We'll do that. So cluster zero and one. Well, we can probably look at what it says in here, right? Before the directories, where it goes to fats, fat data structure. Root directory sectors will have zero. We'll have zero for that because we don't have any root directory region sectors. But I know we're going to be using fat size 32 for the fat sectors. The first data sector is going to be after the reserve sectors and the fats. Simple enough. The number of fats times the size of one in sectors plus the reserve sector count. That's where the data region would start. You can also add the root directory sectors, but we that will be zero for fat 32. So yeah, just right after the fats is going to be the data region. We can find the sector clusters if you want. You can use their expressions for that. Fat type, fat type determination, we'll be using the total sectors for 32, fat 32, the data sectors, the total region, the total number of sectors in the data region, and the clusters will be determined from the number of data sectors. So we have the reserve sector count, we have the number of fats, we'll have a zero for root directory, but basically the reserve sector and the number of fat sectors uh, subtracted from the total number of sectors will be yeah, the number of data sectors. And if you divide that by the sectors per cluster, in my case, to keep it simple, I had one sector per cluster. So it'll just be this value data sectors itself. That is the count of clusters we'll be using that, um, that EFI, that firmware, that other things would be using Windows, for example, to determine what fat file system we're using. It goes off only the, the cluster count. 
So if you have the number of clusters requi required for FAT32, which is 65525, then it's FAT32. If you have a number of clusters that's less than that, in my case, if our number of sectors is less than 65525, this will not work. It will not be a valid FAT32 file system. So we do have to make that happen. Um, and that is one reason that I set a minimum size or that I will set a minimum size of, I think, 33 megabytes. Because we need this number of clusters, so this number of sectors times 512 at minimum. So if we say, oh, 65525 times 512 bytes, that is around 32 megabytes, not 33, but I added some extra padding as well. And if you want to know why they specifically got why they specifically got 65525, I kind of laid that out here. If you want to read it and pause, if it's too small, sorry, make that bigger. Uh, it's because we have two reserve sectors, two reserve clusters in each file allocation table for the fat signature with the media byte and the end of chain, all Fs mark. But also, there are special numbers for F8 to FF as the ending or as the lowest eight bits for a cluster. Um, they're basically reserved. So F8 to FF can stand for any of these, can stand for the end of chain marker. I'll just use all Fs. But that means you, we can't use those as values for file data. It means we're stop, stopping to read the data. And F7 means a bad cluster. So what that means is F7 to FF is not really used for file data, and clusters 0 and 1 aren't used either. So, for example, here for FAT16, you have to be F6 as the lowest 8 bits. <laughs> Because if you go over, if you go F7 here, that counts as an end of that counts as a bad cluster. F8 would be an end of chain marker. So we need F6 to be the highest number we can use for a data, a data cluster for a file in a FAT16 file system here. And beyond that, cluster 0 and 1 aren't used at all for file data, so we have to subtract 2 from that number. So we get FFF4, and that is in decimal 65524. So the maximum number you can use for a data cluster in FAT16 is 65524, and Microsoft said, okay, the minimum would be one more than that for FAT32, because 65525, yeah, is the number right above that. So the maximum number of clusters for FAT16, for example, is 4085. Uh, the minimum, rather. The minimum number is 4085, because that's right after the max for 12-bit. And the maximum for FAT16 is 65524, so FAT32, the minimum clusters, has to start at 65525. And that's why they use the count of clusters as the number to determine the FAT file system you're using. So 65536 I would have used, and that's a 32-bit number, but they don't want to do that. So anyway, the minimum disk size I need for a partition for FAT32 has to be this many sectors, because I'm using one sector per cluster, and UEFI recommended one make alignment. So reserve sector, it said from the doc, it said 32, number of fats I'm using two. I use is, I'm using one sector per cluster to be simple. It could be a higher power of two. So to align the data region on a one meg boundary, <laughs> I'm saying we need 1,008, so I did calculate that right. 32 reserve sectors plus two fats to equal the alignment value in sectors, which is one megabyte here. I'm using 65536 as my internal minimum number of clusters to have some padding after the 65525 minimum. And 65536, data clusters, I forget how I was doing this. <laughs> Sectors for one sector plus 2048 is the minimum needed because we need the reserved and fat table. Yeah, so we'll have one megabyte before the data region. And the data region in clusters needs 65525 sectors at minimum. I'm going to make it 65536. So that number of sectors in the data region plus the one megabyte for the reserved sectors and the fats means we need 67584 in total sectors for our FAT file system, for the EFI system partition. So that number in sectors times the size of a sector at 512 bytes, for example, is going to be this many bytes or 33 megabytes. So that's why later on, and right now really, I'm going to enforce 33 megs as the minimum size for the EFI system partition for 512 byte OBAs. If you want an expression here, I also have that to calculate FAT size and OBAs. Our alignment value divided by our LBA size minus reserve sector count divided by 2. And the minimum disk size would be 65536, what I'm doing for this up here, plus that uh, the number of LBAs to align at a 1 meg boundary times the LBA size. 
dividing that by the alignment number of one meg and we get the file size we'll need. So if you wanted to use 1024 byte sectors, we'd need 65 megs. 2048, we need 129 megs. And for 4K sectors, we'd need 257. So that's also interesting in that I know I added an extra one, an extra meg, but it's like right under double the amount each time. Okay, so that kind of badly explains the math. I'm sure I lost everybody. They're, they're off snoring and asleep by now or they clicked off the video because they're bored. So... <laughs> Um, so let's go back here, and I'll try to write the clusters and everything now. So let's write the fats, try to write some of the fats here. So we're at where the fats start, so let's have a loop here for each fat. So we'll have i, or fat number, will be zero, i is going to be less than the num fats, the number of fats. So it'll write one and then two and then so on. So what I can do is actually, I'll have to F seek to that point. So let's put that in here. We'll have ESP plus the reserve sector counts. So that's where the fats start. So I'm gonna add another number, <laughs> which is not great. And that'll be what, uh, what LBA this particular file allocation table is starting. So it'll be I times the number of sectors for a fat, which will be, um, fat size 32, right? Should be that. BPB underscore. Yeah. FAT size 32. Okay. You're like, why do you have so many parentheses, dude? You're gonna confuse yourself. You're right, I will. But that's all right. <laughs> I'll just put these down on their own lines. So we're gonna go to the... Uh, go to the specific part of this disk image where we're going to be writing this specific file allocation table. So that is offset from the start of the ESP and the reserve sectors. We're going to go to whichever fat this is by multiplying the number of fat we're getting times the size of a fat. So starting off, this will be zero. The next one will be 1,008 later, according to the calculation I did for this, right? Multiply by LBA size to put it, put it into bytes to seek to, and we'll do that. So we need to write the clusters for the stuff we're gonna write. The first cluster is going to be reserved, of course. Um, it'll be, well, it'll be cluster zero, I guess. I'll do it in zero based. So cluster zero is gonna be reserved. It's going to be the sort of fat indicator. I don't think that's what they called it. I'll just do identifier then. So the lowest eight bits are the media, are the media type or the media byte. So I could write a cluster, we'll write 32-bit values. Let's say we have a cluster here. That'll be zero, and I'll just fill it out here. So a little more lines of code, but that's all right. So I have normally all Fs, but the lowest value is gonna be F8. So really we could do this, just six Fs, zero, zero, and we'll or it with the VBR media byte. I think that's eight bits, right? Uh, should be, just making sure, yep, that's eight bits, and that's going to be F8, the media byte right there. Okay, so I'll write the cluster value, size of cluster, we'll write one of those to our image that we F seek to. So that's the first cluster, the file allocation table. We'll write cluster one. Cluster one is reserved. It's just gonna be the end of chain or EOC marker, which is gonna be all Fs. And I wanted to do capital R, so it kept writing, all right. And we'll just do that. So cluster two is going to be the root directory cluster. I'll say cluster start. I'm only gonna be using one cluster for the root directory. So each cluster has one sector associated because I did one sector per cluster. And what is that? 512 bytes at minimum. A directory entry I think is 32 bytes. So we'll be able to have, what is it? 128 by four, which would be 64 by eight, which would be 32 by 16. So we'd be able to have 16 directory entries per directory 
uh, at minimum at 512 byte sector values. So I'm going to have less than 16 directory entries, I'm assuming. I'm only going to have like the EFI folder under it, for example, that would only be one directory entry, not 16. So we can get away with only one cluster value here. So we can just write the end of chain marker saying this is the end of clusters you have to look for past this, you know, this first one. There's no other clusters with data because I'm going to limit my directory sizes. So we can just do that again. I don't really have to fill it with Fs, but that's fine. If end of file, let's do file or directory data, then write EOC marker. So I'm saying I'm limiting it to one. That'll be all right. So cluster three would be wherever our file data is under the root directory. I'm going to be writing uh, EFI boot. That'll be under root. So root will have one directory entry for EFI. And that's what I'll write here. This be cluster three. Uh, so this is root directory. Cluster starts, we'll say EFI directory cluster. Then after that, we'll say we have EFI boot directory. And then after that, we'll have file data that we'll fill out later. Because right now, I'm assuming we don't have any files to write. So cluster 5 plus would be other file <laughs> directories. And I'm going to write those clusters. Those will be the equivalent of the FATs for each FAT. That's really all we have to do there. So it's really not that bad. It's just getting to that point where you know what to write is kind of confusing. But that's the clusters themselves are really easy. We'll write different numbers for actual file data. Like if we want to write bootx64.efi under the boot directory here, then we'll write actual numbers saying what the next cluster for that data will be until we until we end the number of clusters with this mark again. So if we have a file that we write that's like five sectors and I'm doing one sector per cluster, let's assume 512 byte sectors, then we would be writing five clusters starting at cluster five. And that would be a cluster value of, um, it's zero base clusters. So it'll be wherever the next one is. If it was only one sector in size, the file, then we'd still write the end of chain marker. But if it was more than one, we'd have to point to the next cluster where data would be. So in this case, it would be six, right? We can just make the cluster number equal six. It would point to next cluster containing file data. And then we'd go and do that in a loop until we reach the end of data. So if it was five clusters, five sectors in size, we would write six, seven, eight, and nine. And then the 10th one, we would end the chain, right? It would be, so EOC marker, no more file data after this cluster, as an example. E.g. if adding a file with a size equal to five sectors, clusters. So just as an example, we'd be doing that. And that's what, that's what I'll do in a bit. If we want to add files, I'm not doing that now to keep things separated logically in this program. But hopefully that makes a little bit more sense as, the, as for uh, writing clusters there. But okay, after the FATs, I'm going to write the file data. We need to go to the data region. What I could do is have a fat OBA up here, maybe before here. Let's say the start. 64-bit again, maybe 32-bit would work for here as well. Let's say where the fat OBA starts, because I don't have that as any sort of yeah thing there, and that's okay. That would be after the ESP OBA. It'd be this this thing right here, this expression. So BPB reserve sector count. That's where the FATs are going to start. Oh, didn't want to go there. There we go. So that, that way this will look a little bit better. Fat OBA plus the number of fats times the size of one. Okay, so I want to F seek to the data region, <laughs> which I'll have a data LBA. Let's say we have a data LBA, which will be the fat OBA plus the number of fats. 
which is BPB num fats multiplied by the size of each fat. So fat size 32. So it'll be two fats at 1008, right? 2016 plus wherever the fat OBA is, which will be the ESP OBA plus the reserve sectors. So that will be the start of the data region. That's what this will correspond to. I want to seek image to, yeah, seek the image for the data OBA times OBA size. Seek set. All right, so do I have any file data right now? I do. So write file directory data. So let's do root directory. Just so I have it laid out here, we'll do EFI. Slash EFI and we'll have slash boot. Okay. That'll be starting at this data region. So we'll have one directory entry. I do need to fill out stuff for that. So I will have a struct, another struct. So fat32, we'll have directory entry. I'm gonna do short name, only 8.3 8 names. I'm not gonna do file names that go beyond one directory entry to keep things simpler here. Keep the scope down a little bit. And we'll just do packed for everything, whether or not we need it, just to make sure stuff is all right. So I'm going to say fat32 directory entry. We could say short or something on the end. That's probably fine. All right, and that is laid out also in the document somewhere down here. After I go through everything and initialize stuff, we can look at what it says for initialization, I think. We don't have to worry about it. So a directory is nothing but a file composed of a list of 32 byte. I can't see my cursor. It's too small. All right, 32 byte structures. The only special directory is the root directory, which we know where that is at in sectors if we go past the fats and the reserve sectors. Yep. So for fat32, the root directory can be variable size as a cluster chain. It does not have a date or for the root directory specifically, we will not have any date or timestamps. We will not have a file name. We will not have the dot and dot dot files <laughs> as the directory entries. And we could have attribute volume ID. It is valid to have a file that only has that and that will specify the volume label, but that's optional. So we don't even need to have that. <laughs> but other than that, we will have directory entries so the root directory entry, I'm going to write, well, not the root directory entry, for the root directory, the one directory entry I'm going to write for the EFI folder, the EFI directory, um, it will have this, you know, this entry structure. It'll be a struct for the directory entry, but the root directory is just sort of implied and that's okay. <laughs> the file system knows where it's at because it has that, um, that root entry cluster in the BIOS parameter block, right? So that's okay but I'll just fill out this stuff in a struct. So for a directory entry, a short name, in my case, just 11 byte, 8.3 name. So 8.3 because the eight characters and the three character extension combine to form eight characters. That's why the name is eight. That's why stuff like the volume label has to be 11 characters earlier in the VBR. If you're wondering why 11 specifically, it's because that corresponds to a, a directory name field in the directory entries. So for the attributes, we can have read-only, hidden system, volume ID, directory. We will set the directory bit for directories, including the EFI and, and boot folders. Uh, archive, I will not use, and long name, I'm not going to use that, but I'll still have the attributes here. Uh, NTR is NT reserve, can be zero. Create time in tenths of a second. For some reason, they didn't feel the need to specify the fields in between this and this. But if you notice, 13 plus 1 is going to be 14. There's six extra bytes here that they don't specify. And that's for create time and date. So just keep that in mind because they mention it below. They just don't have it in the table because they want to be difficult. Um, then we have the write time and write date. So when the file was created, file creation is considered a write. So I'll just fill these out. We have the first cluster high, first cluster low. So 16 bits for the cluster number that we have to combine to a 32-bit cluster. And we'll have the size in bytes. That's not too bad. The directory name itself can be a zero. Well, it can be E5. It can be zero, zero. It can be 
five if it's that. I think E5 is, is E5 the period? Something is a special name for period. The eight and three name are going to be space padded if we need it to be. If it's less than eight characters, it'll be padded with spaces up until bytes nine, uh, up until bytes eight, nine, and ten, zero based. And then the extension would also be three characters and padded with spaces if it's less than three. Directory name may not equal space. The first character can be a dot though, which it says somewhere below. But anyway, these are not legal in any bytes. It just makes them all capital, so they're uh, case insensitive in the file system. You cannot start, you cannot have dot files, it's illegal. Oh, this is if you only filled out the extension, yeah, the first character cannot be a 20, so you can't do that. Can't have dot files. It goes over the attributes here. The first directory entry in a directory normally, other than the root directory, will have a dot and padded with spaces up until 11. The second one will be two dots padded with spaces up until 11. Dot and dot dot entries standing for this directory and its parent. And you also set the cluster values for the dot entry to itself and the dot dot for the parent. Although if the root directory is the parent, it's zero, even for FAT32. So special cases there. And there we go, zero if it's the root directory. So we have date and time. So here, create time, milliseconds, create time, create date, last. This is create time in tenths, effectively. But create time, create date, and last access date are optional fields. Write time and write date must be supported. So if you go up here, they don't call it milliseconds. They say tenth, but it is the millisecond time. So create time, create date which they even mention right there, and last access date are the fields in between this and this, and they're all two bytes. Those three fields are two bytes to fill out the, uh, the gap here between 14 and 20. Just keep that in mind, because that took me a while when I was first doing this. I had errors because I was missing six bytes there, because I didn't realize I missed it. But just keep that in mind. They go over date and time formats. I'll make a little probably helper function to fill out the date and time formats here. The only thing to note about that is that Microsoft is using an epoch date of 1980 and not the Unix date of 1970. So just keep that in mind. And if we use, uh, I forget, C's time or whatever function, I think it gives 2000 or does it only give 1970? We can, we can calculate these things. That's all right. If we go and we say, man, is it local time? <laughs> Local time is 1970, so we'd, uh, we'd have to like subtract the date for 1980, I think. Or wait, no, that, that's what it says. Thought one of them had 2000. I do man, what about just time? Time gives it that, no, I mean like, the C version, which would be three. Yeah, it's just numbers. Okay, there's a way to do it where we have to calculate and get the difference in dates. And I'll do that, so not to worry about it. Anyway, I'll get on with it. I'm gonna take a short break. I'll be back after I get some water and stuff and we'll fill out directory entries. So thanks for watching so far. Okay, I just copied over that data here for the FAT32 directory entry, the short name version, and the directory entry attributes down here. So again, we have the name of the directory entry, the file or directory within whatever directory we're writing this to, just the name of that file. Got the attribute byte, got reserved for Windows NT, got the millisecond time or the tenths of a second actually in time, create time and date, last access date, and again, these aren't in the, these three fields aren't in that table. But we have to add them there for padding be between the other two values that were there. But after that, we have the first cluster high, 16 bits, the write time or create time and date, if you will, when we make it, the low 16 bits of the cluster and the size of the file in bytes. And together, this is 32 bytes per directory entry. The attributes, the only ones we're going to be concerned about are probably just setting the directory bit. And setting that will mean the file size will be zero for a directory. A directory entry's file size will be zero if the directory attribute uh, bit is set. According to this thing, I think, 
I read that somewhere. When a directory is created, yeah, the attribute directory bit is set and the file size is zero, so keep that in mind. And then we have to write dot and dot dots and stuff. Okay, other than, other than for the root directory. So we'll get to that. I'll just go down here, root directory. So the root directory isn't anything special. We don't write an entry for the root directory itself, but we do write entries for the files under that directory, right? So in this case, we'll be writing an entry for the EFI folder, right? But this will be within the root directory. Here we'll write entries under the EFI folder and then under EFI boot. But here we're only gonna have one thing under the root directory. So we'll have an EFI directory entry. So I called it fat32 directory entry short. That's what I called it. Let's just call it directory entry or dir int. Usually these things are. And it was here. Move that up. So directory name is going to be just an array of characters here. It'll be EFI and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's 11 length. If I get everything, yep, Vim says that's 11. Directory attribute will just have the bat32 directory attribute here, which I could have typed def that to the enum actually, but that's okay. We'll be able to set that there. So nt reserved is going to be zero. Create time tenth, I'm going to make zero, and I'm not going to change it because it's optional. <laughs> I will set the create date and time from the right date and time in a second. But the, the tenth, the millisecond time, I'm not going to be worried about because uh, I don't want to do extra calculations for that. So <laughs> we don't need to worry about it. So we don't have to. So create time and date, last access date, I probably won't worry about this either because we aren't really accessing the file when we write it, but we could probably set it the same as the create or the write date. That would probably be fine as well. So first cluster high for all of these will probably be zero, just for the sake of argument. So in the first, well, the first part of the actual data region of our file allocation table, you know, file system, will be all of the, the cluster values for these files and stuff, right? And I'm probably gonna be within a 16-bit limit for clusters. Like I'm not gonna write past sector 65535, probably. <laughs> like the total amount of files and directories I'm gonna be writing is gonna be pretty low. It's not gonna breach that value. So we won't have anything go into the top 16 bits of cluster values, probably. So that th this should stay zero for everything. Cluster low, will be set to whatever cluster the file data is gonna be associated with, that's fine. But cluster high probably will never be set. So then we have write time, right now will be zero. Write date as well. First cluster low is going to be three. And file size for directory is gonna be zero because the directory has the attribute of attribute directory. So I'll just do this here. Directories have zero file size. Why is the first cluster low three? And that is because it's the, you can get rid of this now. That's because it's the zero based cluster number where the file or the directory is at. So cluster zero is the ID, one's the end of chain, two is the root directory, but the EFI subfolder of the root directory is at cluster three, zero based. So we write that cluster number for its directory entry. So the file system, and something using this file system knows where to find it, right? We'll do that. This would be root, root directory entries. Okay, I do want to write that, but I do need to fill out these date and times. I don't think I really need to. It'll have some default of 1-1-1980, but I figure I'll fill it out just to be uh, complete and accurate there. So those are 16-bit values for write time and date. So I'm going to have... I don't know, maybe just create, create time and create date. We'll have be here. I'll set them both to zero and I'll make a little function to fill these out. So we'll say, I'll say get um, fat directory time date or something. <laughs> get fat directory entry time date. And I'll pass in the create time and create date just so we have those values there, and then we'll fill those out. So I'll do 
directory entry dot dir create time. And I haven't written this function yet, but I will in a second. Create date will be create date. And we'll do the same thing for write time and write date. I won't mess with last access date and I won't mess with that. So we're just filling out these two time dates. Yep, that'll be fine. Assuming we get those, then we can F write the thing. So let's do directory entry size of directory entry, write one of those. Yeah, it's 32 bytes, so that should be okay. Write them to the image. I know I don't have like error handling for if I don't write these 32 bytes or these like four bytes at a time, I probably should, but I might just leave it for the major parts and assume that these smaller writes are gonna work. <laughs> Probably not great, but oh well. Uh, so okay, let's make a little function to get this. I'll just put it under the other ones at the top or something after CRCs maybe. We'll put it under here. Have it be return. Have it return a void. Let's just say get new date time values for fat32 directory entries. That's fine. So I know I'll be setting the create time and the create date. So that'll equal something. But how do I get these? Well, I have time, right? Yeah, I have time.h, so I can do that, right? And I know I'm probably gonna be using a local time function. And I did look this up, because <laughs> We can give it a struct, a struct to TM, a time struct for broken out values, and we can pass that into local time. And it so happens that the regular time function returns a time t, and local time takes in a time t pointer. So we can use that to our advantage. We can use that here. So if we pass local time of time null, um, that should be okay. I want to return the value, right? That returns a pointer to a struct tm value. Okay, so I should be able to do struct tm tm equals that. Does that work for initializing? <laughs> Probably doesn't. It also doesn't know what these values are. So let's do uint 16 t pointer to time and date. I'll call it in just to separate it in time and in date for input. Otherwise, I might confuse myself on what time is which time, because this is a function. All right. What, what all mistakes do I have? Everything. Excess elements and initializer. Yeah, probably. What is the original issue? Can you tell me that? Time t is a long int. Uh, that makes a pointer from an int without a cast. OK. I'll fix the other ones, but I was just wondering what that one was. It needs a pointer. And I don't like, I have all these other issues. What is the original error? Let's find out. Let's do make two errors.txt. Let's just look at that. That's a lot easier to find out what's actually going on. Redeclaration of read only. Okay. So I called that wrong. The wrong thing. That's true. What did I mean to do long name? Yeah, since I called it read only twice, yeah, that's not what I meant. <laughs> that's not what I meant. We need to do attribute long name. Yeah, that would be bad. Uh, local value, L value required is unary operand. L value required, that's lame. I can't just pass it into there. Okay, pretty lame, but all right. I thought I could be fancy with it. That is not the case. Uh, null time. <laughs> it's just current. It's the current time. We'll have that be current time and um, current time is time null. I guess I can do this. This seems a bit more. I thought I could do it on like a one liner and be fancy with it. But that is not the case. Undeclared, undeclared, unused variable, that's fine. 
but it still has a bunch of other issues. Uh, we'll worry about that later, I think. <laughs> it's all right. I saw an NT res issue. It's all capitals, that's why. Fix that right there. All right. I'll go back here, because there's some special stuff we have to do for this, but I do have TMTM, TM, and we can use TM.year and day and month and all that. So let's do that. That is specified in the document. The date format and the time format. We have uh, years relative to 1980 that we can do there. However, however, if we look at the local time, the man page for TM year, TM year is the number of years since 1900. So we can use that year value and to translate to the number of years since 1980, we can just subtract 80 from that value. So that should be fine. Other than that, we have day of the month, month of year, count of years. Okay. And then the time format's a little bit weird and different. And these bit values are going up. So we should be able to get the high value here for the year ORed with the month ORed with the lowest four bits here. We should be able to do that. I think that would be create date, which is end date. So TM year minus 80. So we have to subtract number of years since 1980, not 1900. And I guess I can shift that. I don't know about operator precedence here, so that is in the top uh, however many bits. How many? Oh, I didn't want to do that. I wanted to do three, not two. I was looking at other stuff. Bits 9 to 15. Okay. So shift left by 9, maybe? Maybe that works. Word with, uh, I don't know. I don't have autocomplete for that. So I need the month of the year, which is going to be TM Mon, number of months since January in the range 0 to 11. So TM Mon, is it TM underscore? It's TM dot TM underscore. Okay. I guess TM Mon. But I don't think that's right because we need 1 to 12 inclusive, not 0 to 11. So we have to add 1 to that. So plus 1. And then we have to shift that by whatever the value is. It is in bits 5 to 8. So shift it over by 5. And then we need the day of the month. Which I think is M day, which is 1 to 31. Okay. 1 to 31, and the day of the month is 1 to 31 inclusive, so that'll work. So there we go. That's in bits 0 to 4, then we have 5 to 8, then we have 9 to 15. Uh, we'll say FAT32 needs number of years since 19, 1980. Local time returns TM year as number years since 1900. Subtract 80 years for correct year value. Also convert uh, month of year from 0 to 11 to 1 to 12 by adding 1. <laughs> A little verbose. I don't need to put all that, but that's fine. Okay, the time format, we have a two-second count, which is 0 to 29 inclusive, 0 to 58 seconds. So we should just divide by 2, or shift right by 1 for the second count. Okay. Minutes is 0 to 59, hours is 0 to 23. Okay. So what do we have? We have min, which is 0 to 59. We have hours, 0 to 23. We have seconds, which is 0 to 59, could be 60, but I'll just divide it by 2. Could be up to 60. Maybe a little, could be up to 60, maybe a little uh, not great there, but okay. 
What is the, the lowest four bits is the second. So the highest four bits is hours. TM dot TM hour. Shift ref, shift right by what? 11. Ordered by minute, shift right by eight, shift right by five. Keep messing up my things here. Shift left rather, not shift right. Yeah, shift right by, shift left by five. Sorry, I keep saying that. <laughs> Hours shift left by 11, ordered with minute, shift left by five. Ordered with second. Um, divided by two or shift right by one. <laughs> Just do divided by two, that's fine. And that won't be shifted by any amount because it's in bit zero to four, yes. So seconds is number of two seconds, I guess. What do they call it? Two second count. Two second count zero to 29. So it could be 60, so it might be 30. So I'll just say if um, this is a bad way of doing it. If TM seconds equals 30, we'll just have it be, or if it's 60, I'll have it be 59 rather. There we go. And then that'll work. And then we'll return. That should be okay. The data at local time from current time. Okay. I need to fix other issues, of course, but then we'll fill them out from here. That should be okay. All right, let's fix the other compile errors before I go on. I have it ESP, that's good. And I just got rid of the fat doc, but that's all right. I'll, t I'll get that back later. 604, 604, 604. It does go on forever, all right. Uh, Let's see, write ESP, we have comparison, if I've told Boolean expression, not equal size of VBR. If not, if write, yeah, I, I do that too much. <laughs> I do have it there, all right, 460. I don't mean to do not, well, I do right here. I mean the expression to be not. <laughs> I mean well. Yeah, the F writes we want to check if the if the result is not equal to the size of the thing we wrote, because we're writing one byte for however many times for the size. So it is not correct to do not F write. My logic was right here though. That's what I meant to do. Uh, argument one of f print f incompatible. I need standard int there for 61. That's true. Or standard error. I want to rewriting errors to standard error. Expected expression before. Okay. File system info. 466, is that not right? Oh, that is a type. I need the actual thing, yeah. Which I called FS info. So we'll see if that works. <laughs> Does that work with lowercase? C doesn't need things to be, it doesn't care about casing, I don't think. There we go. The directory file size is zero, five, four, seven. I just forget syntax everywhere, unfortunately. Expected comma or semicolon. Oh, down here? Oh, this should work here. Oh, this, need a semicolon there because this is a statement assigning a value to directory entry. And there we go, okay. <laughs> I can go back, all right. So that wrote the single directory entry for the EFI folder to the root directory. 
So now I need to go to the EFI directory. So the root directory is written directly at the data region, but the other ones are at the next cluster values, right? Because I wrote them to be at the next cluster values in the FAT. And uh, since I am at one sector per cluster, I can just go to the next sector value or the next disk, disk LBA value, and that'll be the location in the data region of the next directory or file that I'm going to write. So we can just fseek. I mean, I could fseek by an LBA size minus 32, where I'm currently at, that would be fine. Or I can just fseek to the data LBA offset some number. So I'll say offset by one. That'll be right after the root directory. So the data for cluster four, and that'll be all right. Then I need to write stuff there. So I have directory entry already, but I can set new values here, like the name. Uh, we can just copy into there, probably. <laughs> we'll do mem copy. So into directory entry name for EFI, since EFI is not the root directory, it will need the dot and the dot dot directory entries. So I will have to write those. So I'll write dot with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Pad out with spaces, and that'll be eleven long. And then what else do we need? That is going to be this directory itself. So it will refer the EFI directory will refer to itself. It will be a directory. These values can probably the date and times will stay the same. The cluster will stay the same since it refers to itself in this case. All those will be okay, I think. Yeah, so I'll F write it, just copy this. So that is this directory itself. Then we'll need the dot dot entry. Which need to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So parent directory, in this case, it's root. So the root directory is different in that it does not have a cluster value. So first cluster low will be zero in this case. Root directory does not have a cluster value. And then we can write the EFI boot directory entry under EFI directory. So I'll do that here. We'll just have boot. This will be EFI boot directory. Could separate this out as well. Um, say entries. All right, the boot directory, everything should be similar, except it will have a cluster value. And the cluster value will be the one right after the EFI directory, so it'll be four. Cluster. I don't think there's anything else I need. Time and date should be fine as the same ones. Just change the cluster, it doesn't have a file because it's an attribute directory, okay. So that's not too bad. Then we'll go on to the boot directory entries, which in this case will just be dot and dot dot. So pretty, pretty simple. Data OBA plus two, because it'll be the next cluster after EFI. And we should be able to just copy these things. Except we won't be able to, so dot, We'll have the same cluster as the last one here, which will be four. Dot dot will be the parent. It will have zero. No, it won't have zero. It'll have three, since the parent will be the EFI, EFI directory. Parent directory. I'll put it here, EFI. There we go. EFI directory cluster. Okay, so I think that's all we need. I know I don't have anything going into these directories, but that's all I need for that right now. And that's how you write a basic file system with directory entries, setting the date and time, um, setting root, EFI, and EFI boot folders here, setting the clusters for the fats. It's really not bad.
just filling out structs and data. So that should be all right. Assuming my math and fseeks and things were to the correct locations, we should be able to see it in emulation within the file system. We don't have anything in the boot directory, and I will be adding that next, but we should at least be able to check that this works, hopefully. Except it doesn't, because I need string.h for memcopy. That's true. Thought I already had that, but I did not. Yet more headers. Everyone loves headers. All right. We'll remove that and we'll write it. Should be the same size as before. SG disk should still work the same as before. 33 meg and 1 meg. I did look into this and this I think just shows 124 and a half. I mean, this is 1 meg value. I think there's just rounding errors, but these values are correct, so I'm not going to worry about it. But if we try to look at stuff with uh, KeyMu now, say x86 64, say we have a BIOS. BIOS64.bin, I'll set machine Q35 just in case. I'll set net none so we don't have PXE boot. I'm not sure if I need anything. Yeah, I do need drive. File is going to be test image. Format is raw. I think that's all we need here. Yeah, okay. Assuming this stuff is correct, let me move this a little better. So we have the shell. Normally we would have BLK0123 or, or 012, what have you. But now we have this FS0 here under block one. So it knows we have a file system somewhere and that's gonna to correspond to our EFI system partitions. If I type FS0 colon, it'll switch into that system. We can do LS or directory, they'll both be the same thing. And OVMF itself, when emulated here through QEMU, it does add its own set of non-volatile variables, our NVVARs right there, if you can see it. Uh, EFI is in dark blue. We can go into EFI. And I also know that my, my date time stuff was correct. Um, NVVARs, it just adds five hours, I guess, for UTC time, because I'm in central US. So I think UTC minus five. It might just add UCC for NVVARs. But uh, it is 522, and I did make it a minute ago at 1230, so that seems correct. And inside, if we go into EFI, we have our dot and dot dot directories. Dot dot being root. Root doesn't have a file size, so that's fine. Dot, it, um, actually they don't have a file size, but it gives it a default, which is interesting. It gives it a default of 512, even if I didn't fill it out. So that's okay. The times are correct though. So if we go into boot as well, we'll have dot and dot dot. So that's all correct. If we added a file within boot, you would see it here. If it's a boot x64.efi, for example, it would probably not go to this shell. It would just boot up. But uh, yeah, so that all looks okay. If we exit, we'll just go back to its built-in sort of BIOS there. Control Alt Q to end. But that just proves that it does work within emulation. It probably would be similar on hardware. But I'm going to get to where we can boot up an EFI application first before testing that. So, okay, but that accomplishes what I wanted to do for writing the EFI system partition, at least. So I did do that, went through the notes. So the thing I'm going to do next is make a function with probably some duplicated logic, maybe, but I'm gonna make a separate function to add a file to the EFI system partition so that we can use it with a command line flag later. But also here, we can use it to detect if a file in the current folder that we're running this from if we have a file named bootx64.efi, I'm going to automatically add that to the EFI boot uh, directory and the EFI system partition so that if we boot up with that through QEMU or on hardware, it would automatically boot from the UEFI spec supporting that, uh, that naming scheme for an EFI application. And I was thinking maybe I'll make a function to take two arguments <laughs> for a, a string for the path within the ESP and then the file name itself. So you can do autocomplete or I might just have you pass all of this. And I assume that this file is going to be in the current folder. I don't know, but I'm probably going to end the video here because it's been probably like two hours a bit over. You know, there's a little bit more involved with the ESP than the GPTs, <laughs> which was more involved than just the MBR. So these videos are tending longer. Sorry about that. But I think that mostly explained how you'd go through and develop a tiny bit of a fat file system driver, or at least enough to make these folders and stuff. So, okay, the next video, I'm gonna go and try to make a function to add that. And we'll go on from there. The basic data partition is already made technically. 
since it's just zeros, it's blinked out on the disk, that's fine. But I'll go ahead and make a function to add that file. And I'll add files to the EFI system partition for something describing how big our disk image is. And then I'll go on to add flags. So that may be a couple videos. This may be more than one video to add all the flags and stuff. We'll see. But yeah, I'll see you then. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching. Appreciate it. And yeah, cheers.